Hi, everybody. It's Donna Reed Sayer from Nutrition Connection Balance, and we are here to talk about the toxin and herbicide glyphosate. And it's great that you have decided to test your glyphosate level or you're in the glyphosate clinic. So one of the things that we want to make sure that you understand is how important glyphosate is. So we'll be talking about levels. And if you don't know me, I'm Valerie Sayer. I'm one of the clinicians and I'm the owner of Nutrition Connection Balance. I'm a registered and licensed dietitian nutritionist, a certified medical exercise specialist, international marketing director, and Reiki master for over 20 years. And I started Nutrition Connection Balance in 2005. I know that says too many zeros in there, I just see. I have a food science degree from Florida State University. I was a previous compounding director um, at a company pharmacy, and that's how I got a lot of my um, expertise, especially internationally, as well as with working other specialists. We were in a specialist building to begin with. I did a medical nutrition and uh, therapy internship at the Cleveland Clinic, Ohio, for uh, 10 months, almost a year, with the other training. I have done two natural bodybuilding shows and three full marathons after my kids were bored and um, I've done many other smaller races. I'm a mom of five. I'm very passionate about healing and I'm an author of two books. They're available on Amazon, Soul Soaring, which was released last year, 2023, and Eight Ways to Lose Your Blubber. So what's important is that we're going to be talking about the significance of urine and your testing with glyphosate, disease, symptom, risk, facts, as well as mechanism and how, why it causes the things that we're concerned about, your actual lab test results, hope you have those in front of you, therapies, limiting toxin exposure, and retesting. So if you look at your glyphosate test, that's a pretty simple test. I think the big thing that gets people confused is it's not a zero to a hundred scale. So you can't have zero glyphosate, herbicide, pesticides, toxins these days. Unfortunately, we're, we have, you know, babies are born with thousands of toxins in our fetal cords, and we've got it in everything, in our air, in our homes, in our lotions, in our foods, the grass we walk on, and so on, and as well as in the air. So you want to make sure you realize that we're not looking at a zero scale so that you really understand your results. Of course, you want as low as possible. And you can see this person has a very, very high level. We're looking for in the yellow or about 0 0.45 or under. So glyphosate is a weed killing herbicide. It's used a lot in Roundup is one of the main brand names. It inhibits the shikimic pathway. It's an enzyme necessary for plant uh, microorganisms and gut microbes. And it might surprise you, grains are one of the biggest containing foods with glyphosate. And Cheerios is one of the highest. Nature Valley, uh, Nature Valley granola bars, and uh, lots of other things, including wine. You know, uh, California now has a law about glyphosate, but they found 100% of wines had glyphosate in them. So again, besides alcohol being a toxin, and we need less and less as we get older, uh, we also know it has glyphosate. So when we look at toxins, they can be exposed through all different ways, absorbed, inhaled, or ingested. And certainly we know that they contribute, or you may not know, they contribute to disease, brain health, uh, attention disorder, uh, hypertension deficit, IQ and cognition issues, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. There's a new brain lecture uh, that I have on my uh, website, Nutrition Connection Balance. You should just go under there and look under education if you want to learn more about the brain health, as well as oxidative stress and post-COVID. Skin, diabetes, insulin, obesity, cancer, systemic inflammation, because it changes the cytokine. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Lung and respiratory health, cardiovascular, hypertension, which is good blood pressure, liver, kidney, bone displacement. And then of course, we're worried about our babies as well as in pregnancy and postnatal. Our moms taking care of the babies. You can be exposed to them through, again, poor genetics. We'll kind of talk about that as we go along. Environment that includes stress, adrenals, fumes in the air, smoke, water, nutrition, especially poor nutrition liver health, kidney health, prescription medications, decrease liver and kidney health potentially. Of course, aging, body fat. Body fat um, doesn't release toxins, it holds on to them. So we want to lose body fat, not weight, body fat. The immune system, gastrointestinal health, and immune conditions. So let's start with the brain. So when we look at, so that you again know how compelling and important it is to really decide to dive in to really get rid of the glyphosate if you have high levels. Um, not everybody does in this clinic, and that's great. Then you can retest once a year or once every five years if you don't have 
uh, high risk for, for some of the things we talk about. But you can see here this particular study showed glyphosate infiltrates the brain and increases pro-inflammatory cytokines, uh, the TNFA. It's implicated for neurodegenerative diseases and disorders. So glyphosate infiltrates the brain. We didn't know if it went through the blood-brain barrier. Now we know it does. So it can uh, also increase or even be part of why Alzheimer's uh, occurs. It elevates TNF, uh, which is a tumor necrosis factor, and in systemic inflammation levels. You'll see we test CRP levels at our office all the time. We have some two advanced panels, then we even have a small metabolic panel, or we can even test highly sensitive CRP by a finger stick test. I highly recommend that if your glyphosate's high, you can just call our office and get that done, and that'll get evaluated. That is a systemic level, so it's more accurate than even a CRP level because it shows us what systemically is inflamed in your body. Um, it's a protein, in case you didn't know that, when we talk about TNFA. It's an inflammatory cytokine. It also directly uh, suppresses and affects the immune system and causes cell death. So glyphosate is quite serious. It's one of the reasons I'm very proactive with testing it. It's also related and a risk factor for Parkinson's besides Alzheimer's. We know that as pesticides go up, dementia goes up, as well as other conditions. And the risk factor, of course, is glyphosate levels exposure. The neurons in the brain can't transport, transport dopamine properly. We have a neurotransmitter clinic where we look at dopamine. So if you do have high levels or high risk in your family or very concerned about dementia, cognitive issues, memory, uh, anything like that, then you want to test the neurotransmitter clinic. It causes neural inflammation and oxidative stress. And you can see here lots of things I could put up, but I try to you know stay fairly up to date. But make sure that there are reputable sources where they showed even a Florida study su suggested that Roundup could cause Parkinson's disease. And we also know that there's a 41% increased risk of lymphoma when you're exposed to glyphosate. So that's um, it's been around for quite a while, 2019, and you'll find more studies on that also. We know how it's linked to cancer, in particular pesticides, herbicides are, they change the DNA damage, they uh, disrupt hormones, that's one of my specialties. It also increases oxidative stress, and we already have a lot of stress, or if we don't eat as well, or we have poor sleep, or we're over busy. You know, we don't have enough whole foods. We don't have enough antioxidants from foods, fruits, and vegetables. Mainly, if we have more systemic inflammation due to another condition, an injury, an immune, an autoimmune condition, or even just by glyphosate, and it's a pro-carcinogen activation. So we know the mechanisms and why it happens. We also know that toxins, not always overeating or obesity, can cause diabetes. They show that there is a relationship to pollutants as well as different types of environmental toxins to diabetes. And I have patients that are type 2 diabetic or insulin resistant that are very thin. That can happen also as you age because insulin goes down, but it also can be toxins. We know that some of the symptoms can be disease such as cancer, fatigue, different types of algae or aches and pains, systemic inflammation or other types of pain, depression, changes cognitively, whether it's foggy brain or memory, skin issues, tumors, especially in pets, uh, the GI with nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. There's all sorts of depletions that happen in minerals, phytonutrients, and even sometimes vitamins. We know that the exosome, that, that when we look, that 90% of chronic disease is driven by the environment, not genetics. That's really good. Some people say 75%, some say as high as 93%, especially if you individualize tests and treat people, which we don't do. You know, coming to my practice as well as testing your glyphosate, obviously we're looking at individual treatment. And so that's very different. So it's great that you're proactive. So you're going to be in the higher percentage of if you do have a higher risk of genetics or exposures, then hopefully we're going to reduce that risk, especially as you age. But it, the reaction we know are from all different things, from radiation, from tests, MRIs, x-rays, CAT scans, stress, our lifestyle, too much drinking, not enough sleep, smoking, infections, drugs, in other words, prescription drugs, poor diet, fast food, trans fatty acids, too high saturated fats, too low of essential fatty acids, pollution. And then of course we have all sorts of other things that are disrupt our particular inner chemical biochemistry system. So we wanna be really aware of how much we can control, not become obsessive because there's always gonna be stress, but how you respond to it and how you protect yourself is part of the key. We also know that toxicity 
also directly affects children and adults. We get it all different ways. I just put these up so that you understand why if I ask you to test your minerals, your toxic metals, or if I ask you to test your highly sensitive CRP, there's enormous research uh, when we look at things like lead and mercury and air pollution, as well as all different types of environmental things that directly increase that body's ability that we can't release glyphosate or other toxins, so it all works together. We also know that when we see glyphosate, it has been you know, pretty successfully had lawsuits where people did win buyout and payouts. In fact, one of our patients with one of my glyphosate lectures years ago called his attorney and uh, they said they were already settled, but he could possibly take the case and also because he had lymphoma. Um, and so when we look, we know that glyphosate is in a lot of popular places because the food is not clean. So when we look at Panera Bread, when we look at Nature Granola Bar, I have a real beef with that because our, our daughter, when they would play volleyball, they weren't allowed to bring food in and they only had those particular bars. We actually went out in the car and would eat. And that way, once in a blue moon or when she went out after a volleyball uh, tournament on the weekend, then, you know, hopefully it was in a better restaurant. So again, it really does matter. And we know that glyphosate is really not something you want to have in your body and it is contribute to disease. That's why you're going to see why I'm so picky at my office. I look at clean foods. It isn't just whole foods. It's also clean foods. People eat a lot of healthy foods sometimes, but let's say they're eating salads out every day. Well, the problem with that, and including the vegetables, is they probably have glyphosate. It's very rare that they buy organic or that they grow them themselves. We know that's changing, and that's really good from the tower gardens as well as other different factors we'll go into, but still, you want to know that you're protected. So we have Juice Plus Complete Bars. They're very clean. That means they are tested for uh, pesticides and herbicides and contaminants. And then the Complete Shake is a plant-based powder, but all of our products at, at Nutrition Connection Balance, we, um, we look at all different things from the GMO to NSF facilities so that we know they're contaminant free and I'll show you that as we go on. So that's part of the reason that I ask that you consider getting the therapies at my office, not online. And there's multiple other reasons. Part of that is I can track better so I know what the compliance level is. Or if you are having an issue, I know it's not a manufacturing issue. I know it's the actual product that's in there. And then you are just not maybe a responder and we need to change the therapy. So it's really, really helpful. When we look at um, clean food, we know that our pets are also being affected. There's multiple different ways that we know that our pets are affected directly by glyphosate. And it's pretty sad because they can test glyphosate and it's in the cat and dog urine. Part of that reason is not just the animal feeds, but also the exposure from walking out in lawns. And especially people that live near golf courses or on golf courses, those pets typically have the highest tumors and other cancer rates. So we know that it's happening to all of us and we want to be able to protect our loving pets and our family. So if you look at your glyphosate levels, as I mentioned before, that it's a 0.38 and above scale. And so we want, of course, as low as possible, the lower the better. Um, and this particular person you can see started really high at 2.3. Um, and then this is actually her third test and now at 0 0.9. The reason I, I go over this again is because we wanted as low as possible, hopefully 0 0.45 or under. And the problem is when you do detoxification, because we don't know how long it's been there or how much it's collected in your tissues, if there's other toxins, systemic inflammation, higher body fat, we know that what I'm looking for is by the second test for it to change. It could go way up or it could go, start going down. If it goes way up, like in almost every cancer patient I've had, the third time it starts to go down. What we're looking for is that it, it does move by the second test. So we're releasing it. And when we talk about releasing it as well as detoxification, we'll talk about why you've got to do some other things if you're going to make sure you're getting glyphosate and other contaminants out of your system. So again, the lower the better, but remember by the second test, we're looking, it could go way up and that's important. What we do see when I've tested people for years and years is let's say it's low, 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 or let's say they started high, then they get lower, 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 and then five years later, they're high. We know it's a re-exposure. We know it's not in their tissues anymore. So you have to test multiple times, okay? The glyphosate levels, as we said, there's different moderation levels, and you really, the easiest way versus the numbers is to look at my evaluation and, of course, look at your scale. We want it 0.5 or less, okay? So we want it out of the orange. It's certainly 
Unfortunately, almost every cancer patient I've had that have done chemo and radiation, they're off the chart. We can't say if it caused it or if it was other parts of the treatment or it got stuck in the tissues, but we want it nice and low in the yellow, okay? So that's important. What to do? So we want to buy organic when we can. However, what's very upsetting is that even when you buy organic, it could be, especially with leafy greens, have been touched up to 26 times or 26 hands have touched it before it even reaches your table. So you really want to grow your own greens. And then again, make sure that you are looking at our toxin list that was attached to your email, whether you, you, know, you did it uh, separately or part of a clinic because it'll have multiple different things that you can do, including how to wash your fruits and vegetables. You can grow a tower garden. We have that available for you. We have the home, which is the one over the right-hand corner. This was just this week where I harvested my tower garden greens. I grow about six different lettuces because I eat a lot of salads and put them in my shakes and our family eats them on our um, other foods. So we grow mainly greens, but you can in my, um, Flex at the office. I usually also grow mainly lettuces because we eat so much, but I have grown strawberries and green beans and multiple other vegetables. The flex, you can go in and outside. The home is only indoors. Both come with lights. So you can grow it all year round no matter where you are. So that's really fantastic. I am not a gardener, um, but I can grow the tower gardens. And you can leave for even up to about two weeks or even up to almost two and a half, three weeks, depending on which one you have. So you don't have to worry, it just keeps growing and the water runs. So again, if you need more information on that, call in CB, email us, and we'll get you more information and answer your questions and make sure you order the right one for you. Or there's discounts if you order three or more, that type of thing, if you're looking for a lot of growing availability. You want a strong nutrition foundation. Um, I've always gone over this. You want to eat cleaner nutrition, 80% clean, 20% fun. You only want to have contaminant-free supplements. If you haven't watched the right supplement lecture on my website, or we have an easy, really super easy, small one page handout explaining again how important it is to get quality, non contaminant free NSF standard or an NSF facility, non GMO, all those things. I can't tell you how important it is to your long term health because a lot of people eat whole foods and they have very high glycemic. You want to have 25 to 35 grams of fiber. We're going to talk more about that in detail. You want to limit alcohol because it's already a toxin. You want to obviously limit what says down there. I don't know how that got cut off, but limit your exposures. And then we certainly want to make sure that you are looking at your follow-up sheet on your email that has the specific therapies that I'm recommending for you based on whether it's your first time testing, if I know other things about you, um, that type of thing, what your levels are, be consistent. We really need 95 to 100% consistency. It takes time. The very disappointing th thing about glyphosate and very severe environmental toxins, not so much metals, um, are they can take up to three years to really get down to the normal levels. Typically, my patients, it doesn't take that long because I'm pretty aggressive as well as you know, you guys are really proactive with your health. So you tend to be healthier. You tend to exercise. You tend not to smoke. You tend not to eat fake sodas and fake food diet foods. So again, we see a better result as well as foundation with juice plus, vitamin D, essential fatty acids. And of course, you're buying at my office. So I know you're getting contaminant free supplements and powders and shakes and bars. Additional testing may be needed. We'll talk about all these in a minute and then detoxify. And if you have lawns, if you're near golf courses, make sure they're not using glyphosate. We had a very well-known doctor in one of my lectures that you can listen yourself or read his book. It's on my website under education. There's part one and part two on cancer prevention. And, um, and you know, his glyphosate went up. I think it was part of one of the reasons he got cancer one of the two times. And um, he petitioned for his golf course and brought in levels and proved it to him. And they did change from using glyphosate. So and the other thing that you can do if you're golfing is make sure you wear gloves when you golf and wear closed toed shoes or higher socks if you wear shorts. And uh, of course, wash your hands. So that way, again, you're getting less exposure, certainly not sandals um, and that type of thing. And then with your pets, I would say don't walk them on a golf course unless you know they're glyphosate free, period. It's just that simple. Okay. Here's an example of, again, the tower gardens, why you want to grow them and different herbs and leafy greens is it, it uses 98% less water. It's soil free. You can grow it right inside your house. I have a home right next to my refrigerator and I grow the flex in our waiting room at our office. It grows up to 30% more herbs and produce, it grows clean outdoors in or outdoor. 
um, if you have the flex indoor only with the home and you can grow all year round no matter what environment you are because there's lights and you produce greens three times faster with a water and mineral blend. You want to also really be watching every year. Unfortunately, they don't release the dirty dozen sometime until March or April of each year. And I'm recording this here in February 2024. So I had to use last year's. But they always produce a dirty dozen list. That means you should only eat them if they're organic. And sometimes, like I'm in a small town, they don't have availability. Sometimes organic apples, as an example, then I will wash them and then I will peel them. Um, before I eat them, if I can't get organic, okay? And again, you can see that like spinach greens and so on are always on the dirty dozen list. That is part of why I mainly grow greens on my tower garden. Uh, if you're not familiar with EWG.org, Environmental Working Group, it's a particular group that is a nonprofit group. They have great resources for how to have contaminant lotions and foods and things like that. So a really great website if you want to learn more. Then there's always a group of foods. They also do the clean 15. And so for an example, like with avocados, you can buy avocados that are not organic. They tend to be have very low residue of pesticides and herbicides. I just warn people that when you cut it, either wash it or when you cut it, make sure you're washing the knife because then again, it gets on the inside and you don't know what it's been next to. It's been in a truck, that type of thing. It's been in a grocery store. People have been touching it. So make sure you wash it and wash your knife. Um, and one of the foods I just put on here, we were in New Zealand um, last Christmas time, and we got to see kiwis being grown. So kiwi are on the clean uh, 15 list. So that's pretty awesome. And kiwis have more vitamin C than any other fruit, just so you know. One kiwi. So, and then they have the golden kiwis that even have more. I think up to three times more. So it's pretty, pretty fascinating. So it was pretty cool to see the kiwis. It was amazing how we got to see thousands of them. I just didn't expect them to grow like this. So it was pretty neat. So you want to, uh, you know, buy the clean 15. You don't have to worry as much about organic, but you want to still be washing it and washing your knife. We know that fiber is absolutely essential to detoxification and getting glyphosate in any metals or any types of detoxification. It helps with the excretion of them. You don't want to release them and have them stay in. There's actually two different processes that happen in the body to detoxify. And elimination, of course, is the really important part in the urine and the stool. So you want 25 to 35 grams of fiber or more. You want to start really, I try to teach people to start your day with 10 to 12 grams. I do a high protein pancake with some steel cut glyphosate free oats. I mix it with my uh, complete protein shake just seven grams of fiber, and then I use blueberries. So I always start my morning out with 12 to 15 grams of fiber because it's really hard to reach the 25 to 35 a day without supplementation if you don't eat a lot in the morning and then have a lot of fruits and vegetables. You'll notice I don't have cereal on this list because cereal is, again, one of the highest glyphosate-containing foods because it's a grain. They have to spray grains a lot before they process them, and then when you process them, it concentrates it. So the Juice Plus Complete Powder is six different plant proteins. It's seven grams of fiber. We have a Juice Plus Fig Bar. Tastes really good warmed up. Five grams of fiber. There's, a, if you have a half cup of organic berries, that's about four grams. Half a cup of most vegetables are two to four grams. About a quarter medium of, uh, I should say a quarter, not medium, but a quarter medium Avocados, about two and a half grams. A quarter cup of raw pecans, organic raw pecans, three grams. By the way, pecans are the highest level of antioxidant of any food. There's a particular uh, phenolic uh, antioxidant there, epigalate, and, and so it's really terrific. I teach even patients that are really cautious about their weight, even a few days a week, just even eat two raw, raw pecans. Why not? If you can get some fiber and get some really good antioxidants that are really, you know, anti-disease forming. We have a powder called Fiber Lean and Protect. They're really tiny, mini scoops. If you have... Um, you know, a digestive system that's funky, start with one mini scoop and then work your way up to two. It's a really small scooper, so it doesn't make things thick and you can add it to any shape or food or even like your oats in the morning. Fiber caps, uh, when I work with bodybuilders and wrestlers or when I travel, I always bring fiber capsules with me because it's really hard to get fiber when you're traveling. And just sometimes, you know, your digestive system changed. You really want to be pooping or having one to three stools a day. Half a cup of lentils and beans are about five to nine grams of fiber and about a half cup of hummus is about three grams. So those are just some helpful tips so that you're getting healthy glyphosate free foods 
that then help release the toxins with the other therapies that we do. Okay, and fiber is so important. It is absolutely essential as well uh, and is important for your digestive tract and different types of cancers of the digestive tract. So you need to get fiber. All right. We know that the quality of supplements when we talk about therapies is extremely important. The NSF uh, signification is tested for contaminants after manufacturing. So when people say, well, I got this capsule, it's not organic. I don't care if it's organic. What I care about is after it's been in that field, in the truck, in the manufacturing plant, has it been tested for contaminants? Is it non-genetically modified? Is, you know, when you, when you see a clinician, I always say, you want to ask, how many patients have you seen? You know, when you get a supplement, what's the part of the plant? What form is it? How is it manufactured? It all changes the effectiveness and the safety. That's part of my food science degree, why I'm an expert in supplementation and why I have 500 brands in my office and I private label a lot so that I can make sure I have the quality control. If it doesn't have an NSF standard, then I know it's been tested for contaminants, metals, and so on, or it's made in an NSF facility, just so you know. You can also, I really highly recommend you watch the right supplement lecture on our website, Nutrition Connection Balance. Please read and review all of the handouts attached to your email. I have a simple one page on glyphosate, but then there's you know a multiple page one on different toxins that I updated every year so that you're aware of other things that could contribute to not just glyphosate, but your health. And when we talk about the nutrition foundation, it's really important. People that are healthier have a higher antioxidant level in their blood, better balance, again, get rid of glyphosate. And when they do have exposures, have less absorption. So we want the right vitamin D. I always prefer you test, but if you won't test by a finger stick test from us or your doctor, then you want to start with one to 2,000 IUs and a drop or a capsule. You want to make sure it's colocaciferol D3, not D2. You have essential fatty acids. Again, I prefer that you test. That's my most important clinic for any adult and infant and child, period, because it's part of their foundational health for every single condition on the planet, including COVID. That was way before COVID happened. We knew with pneumonia and respiratory issues. We want to make sure it's the right form. Anytime you buy any omegas from our office, especially if it's specifically recommended, all of them are our triglyceride form, not the ethyl ester. Omega Clinic, please consider getting in it if you have it. If you won't, then start on at least two to four of the Juice Plus Omegas a day if you want to stay plant-based or vegan. Then you want to start with two, and if you're over 50, at least four. Or you can start on the Pro EPA Extra or two of the Omega Balance. But again, then I'd recommend somewhere between three and six months that you test your essential fatty acid levels so we can fine-tune it. Juice Plus if you're not aware of it, it's in capsules, it's powdered produce. It has a nutrition facts label. It is not a dietary supplement. And what's different about it is it's been around for over 30 years and it has 48 medical studies in almost every type of medical journal, cardiology, inflammatory, skin, dermatology, periodontal disease. So you want to be taking things that give you the nutrition, give you some extra fruits and vegetables and antioxidants from food forms. And I don't have to know if you have surgery, if you have an accident, if you're on multiple medications, the Juice Plus is food. If you can eat food, you can take the Juice Plus. We also put the capsules in two feedings. And if you don't like swallowing capsules, there's chewable gummies, or you can open the capsules and put it into one of your smoothies with your greens or your complete shake. So we have a lot of options. Okay. So if you please look at your individual recommendation that typically will use some form of glutathione. There's a liquid like the Zomo form. There's capsules. That's a particular form of uh, glutathione called Toxicor. We have the office, and then we have acetyl glutathione um, that we also use. Then there's NAC and acetyl L-cysteine. They particularly help with the pathways. By the way, glutathione and NAC have been around a long time. I've used them a long time, even before I learned a lot about contaminants and glyphosate. And again, they are very well known with cancer treatment because they protect tissues and organs. So they're very helpful with compromised patients also. And uh, I think it was Baylor School of Medicine also did a study where they showed glutathione was very helpful for eliminating or reducing the risk, even some of the symptoms post-COVID. So we know there's a lot of benefits from that. It's not something new. 
I have a particular ACZ spray at the office that, especially when you're dealing with kids that, again, are picky. It doesn't taste like anything. It works really well on metals and nuclear elements, but sometimes we'll use it also with glyphosate. There's environmental defense, especially when you can't figure out the cause. Those are capsules. There's a particular binder I use. Some of the strongest are a push catch. People are so resistant with it. I do it every year, at least 10 days, even if my glyphosate's low, because you'll see, I test myself, not see, but I, I test myself quite often because I do every test in my office, even when there's not a problem. That way I know it also affects it or how we could have an exposure we don't know about or things change with age or eating or weight or my performance or my exercise level. So push catch is fantastic. It's a powder you put in water and then there's a liquid that you mix with water and it is one of the best. Uh, EDTA with RLA is a liquid and it's a much smaller dose. A lot of people find that helpful. It's also incredibly helpful for higher glucose, insulin resistance, blood flow, blood clots, it's people that have had stroke. So very, very helpful. If there is something really important in your medical history or something you're battling, please, when you do a clinic, let our office manager know by email so that we know when we're evaluating your results. Then there's metal contaminant release that's really strong also in a capsule form. So again, it just depends on what I see in your levels. Or if you've done other tests, I take all of that into consideration. So those would be some of the therapies that are most effective for glutathione. So we know that we also... Um, use some other things because one of the things that happens when you detoxify, especially if you have very high levels, we want to protect the liver. Some of the formulas and the capsules have milk thistle in them. Some do not. So it depends. Some of the liquid do. So again, it depends what I recommend and where your levels are, or if I know other things or other clinics you've been in, then it helps me know anything else medically that I would pick certain things. We have a particular liquid called kidney care. We also have a particular kidney, liver, and detox capsule. There's heart and mitochondria. If we're concerned about that, we may put you on some CoQ10. It helps energy get in the cell and protects those energy powerhouses. All tissues and organs, when we're worried about protection, if someone will not do the Juice Plus or they have a very high risk, we'll use Protect. Uh, the Juice Plus capsules are gummy. The Onco and Tissue Shield is a really great one, especially when someone's at very high risk, have had cancer, or has done the estrogen test or some of the other genetic tests where we know there might be an increased risk or family risk. And it's one capsules a day. And then there's, again, the glutathione, and there's many forms of that we use at the office. And everybody responds different. That's what's interesting. So that's why I have different forms and different kinds if we're not seeing something be effective. So please remember to read all handouts that are attached. You might want to consider an air filter at your home. This is just one example of what I have in our bedroom care called the Air Doctor. I'm not for that. I'm not a representative of that company or anything like that. And of course, there's other ones. When we're really trying to detox, you want to be sweating. You can do that through exercise saunas or infrared. Of course, if you have any medical conditions, make sure you get the okay to do that. Please review. We have multiple free other lectures on our website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com under education. You can share that with anybody. Want to be organized and very compliant with therapies. I always tell people, if you're not going to detox and take it seriously, don't bother. You can't do it in two, three days. You absolutely cannot. When you're doing it for three to 10 days, that's when you've drank too much or you just want to you know, start clean or you want to get on a better path after a vacation. That is not medically detoxing. When we're talking about really detoxing. It is a one to three year journey, almost always. So you want to be very compliant. Um, I use these lockables. Our whole family has used them forever. And they're actually at craft stores or Michaels or Amazon, but they lock on the sides. And you could put breakfast, dinner, breakfast, dinner, lunch on each one. So one could be one day. I use the smaller ones and one per day because I put all my Juice Plus capsules in them when breakfast, lunch, dinner. And then I, if I'm traveling, I put extra things or bedtime things like melatonin or, you know, the end. And remember, I test everything. So I don't take anything without testing. Um, but they're very helpful. And I really recommend you do, you know, two to four weeks at a time. Because if you're having the bottles out on the counter, you're going to be missing them. And when you have this also, you know, when you go to fill these back up, if you have five, six, seven little areas full, then you've missed that multiple times. And we also look at what you've ordered at the office. We know how many are in a bottle. So, and then what you're supposed to be on. So there's a lot of different reasons if we don't see 
um, you know, results that we want. Um, the second thing is we have a new ability to label, um, to develop little and individual um, packets for 30 days or, um, and we can do it one time or we can do it consistently. Sometimes that's really helpful if people are traveling a lot or if, again, they don't need to be on powders or, um, you know, liquids. If they do, you could still do that, but it makes it a little bit more difficult. So we do have some new availability to help with compliance. Um, and then we, the other thing that's really helpful is make sure your handout that gives all of the supplements and what to take in therapies, have that next to your bottles or or also take that list and write on your bottles, a.m., p.m., 1 a.m., 1 p.m., you know, one, three times a day. So that, again, when you put it in the containers, if you're not looking at the sheet every time, I mean, I have a great memory, and I still will look at it just to be sure that I'm taking it exactly with whatever my results have shown. Okay, so please look at your therapy list. Please consider getting the Craftmate lockables. Um, you can talk to us if you want us to make an individual box that has little individual pre-made packets. We can't do all supplements that way, but there are some that we can do. And sometimes when people are on multiple things and they're traveling and they need to pare it down, we'll do that also. Or like myself, I just did mine as an example where I did about a third of my supplements and then the rest I still do myself. So there's a lot of different things we can offer to help be compliant. So please, please, please be compliant, okay? We know that with toxins, you've got to test every three to six months. If your levels are bad, we might ask you to test outside of the clinic time. And that could be as early as three months. And then again, it's based on your individual results. And again, it's a one to three year journey. Please don't think you're going to detox if your glyphosate's high in, in a week or two. That is absolutely, it won't work. I'm going to tell you, I've, I've done enough and I've tested myself enough and other people that we've been very aggressive sometimes, even with people that are very sick. And uh, it takes quite a while. So detoxification is quite a commitment and I hope you will make it for your health as well as reducing the risk of conditions and disease for yourself. So when we look, a little trouble moving it there, why might I recommend additional testing? So again, I just, I always give new things. Here was an example with Ting, which is, is a, um, you know, it's a foot spray that people can get at Target or anywhere. And it was recalled this month in 2024 because it had benzene. You know, the benzenes are human carcinogens. That means they are toxic to us. It's amazing. I can pull up hundreds of these. You know, a pharmaceutical company found that they had a toxin that was in one of the blood pressure medications. Preservatives and in injections, these are from the CDC. Um, so, you know, there's all sorts of lists that you may not realize that you're getting from the vaccine, from pharmaceutical medications, from things over the counter. And that's why I'm so picky about everything and such a diligent educator, I hope. And that's why I do a video and handouts every year that are updated. And if we have something big that happens, something huge research or something like the COVID, obviously we, we redid all our handouts and videos even in between that same year, um, just to make sure we were staying updated for you. Okay, so. We may ask you to do extra testing. Uh, we may ask you to do your minerals, your toxic metals or your minerals, especially if I feel like we have to be aggressive with detoxing, you have extremely high levels or the second test, it comes back really high, higher and you're detoxing, then we want to make sure that we are making sure you get enough minerals and that you don't have toxic metals. You can do it by hair. It is much less expensive by hair. But if you are detoxing aggressively or have any kidney or blood sugar issues, we need to test it by urine. Either is fine, um, you know, in general. But again, if I'm really concerned about something, I might ask you to do a particular one. Um, we know that also, you know, we're looking at the O estrogen test. I give you an example from mine um, that gives you where there's almost no risk, very mild risk, medium risk, or high risk. Here, I only had one in the, out of the 11 markers that was very high risk, and it was absent for glutathione. That means I cannot detoxify very well. So when we look, that means my liver, my kidneys, when I get exposed to anything, it puts me at higher risk for breast cancer and other conditions. And I already knew this because I don't respond the same way. Um, when my husband and I first moved to Florida into our new home, we both developed arsenic poisoning. This went down the very first test. Mine barely moved. I mean, it moved, but it just, it took five tests. 
Amazing. So this is part of the reason. So if you're a female or if we're very worried about breast cancer, then I would ask you to do the O estrogen test. I highly recommend any of my patients that are serious about their health to do the O estrogen test at least once. I'm sorry, once after the age of 50, if not before. And you never have to do a genetic test twice, so that's the good news. We also have some other genetic tests if we're worried about you know, how you respond to CBD or if we're looking at other nutrients. So again, genetic tests only have to be done once. So they're very, very helpful. And they're very proactive with lifestyle changes and different techniques in the environment that you can do that's specific to you. So again, I have to, I'll, I'll probably always be on glutathione. Um, so now we figured out why that um, I've only had two surgeries, but after a very, very uh, small surgery, after a small melanoma, for two years, I developed a whole body systemic lymphoma, uh, not lymphoma, lymphatic type of infection. And so that's because I can't get rid of things. So again, really important to know why and what your risks are or helps us be more specific for your test results. There's an antioxidant uh, and a redox score that I love to do because that helps me know if you have enough in your system and do we need to have extra juice plus? Do we need to add that onco and tissue support? Are there other genetic or current status reasons that your antioxidants aren't enough? And it gives you a value, which is really helpful, as well as many, many markers so that I know, you know, like, let's say you have a little bit of blood sugar issues or brain particular issues and cognitive issues that I might use, you know, again, a particular RLA liquid because it's got lipoic acid in it. But let's say we not don't have you on the ready dose. That APA test will tell me if I need to give you more. And then the really fun test, just so you know, is the telomere score. I've done telomeres for a long time. I just finally, really the last year, started telling more patients about it. And that's because it requires a venipuncture, but we have availability for people to come to your home now or office to draw the blood. And um, telomeres is the little comments on your genes. And as you age, it increases the damage and your telomere score tells us how you're aging. And so it's very helpful and environmental diet, all those things make a big difference, supplementation. And the telomere score, if you didn't have watched the twin study um, on Netflix, they have always said, it, you know, I don't usually test telomeres once a year. They were, when they did telomeres with a plant-based diet or a, a, a better, healthier protein containing animal diet with exercise, other lifestyle changes, they were shocked that in two months, telomeres even improved slightly. I really only test it once a year unless someone's really upset, has a really terrible level and they're very proactive. Then we can test it in six months to make sure it's going up. But a very fun thing that is helpful and very, very accurate. It was one of the reasons um, I got on Juice Plus 21 years ago was because of genetics in my family. We have a great loving family, a um, lot of wonderful attributes, but very unhealthy. So that's why I got into the field. And uh, when I found out Juice Plus had a telomere study, that was one of the reasons I got on it um, a long time ago, because you can, you have to try to make sure you don't express those genes that you're given. And so I'm a great testament to someone that doesn't have the greatest genes, as well as being in uh, two exercise and pregnancy studies, and they were just mortified by what they saw. Um, but um, some people have to work harder. You know, we all have something. So the telomere score is really kind of a fun thing, but very, very helpful also. So you can do that uh, through our office. So remember, it takes time, patience, and retesting. The keys to success are identifying the toxin through lab testing, what you've done, possibly looking at other tests, identifying those exposures, eliminating the exposures, decreasing the toxic load in your blood, making sure you're getting enough fiber so it's coming out of your system and the right treatment, repairing the enzyme damage with nutrients and individual minerals, repairing the damage, eat about 80, 20 clean, I say 80% clean, 20% fun, unless you have a life-threatening condition, then we might need to be 90, 10. Your next testing clinic, make sure you put it on your calendar, on your phone, in your date book, whatever you have. Angie, our clinic specialist, will call and remind you, but we only call once by email or text. We don't badger and call over and over anymore. Or you're adults, you want to be proactive with your health, and we want you to be proactive. That's why we do the videos. That's why we do the handouts so you can learn more. You can call our office or email to get started on the therapies or if we're changing the therapies or if you have a question about something. You, your friends, family, and colleagues can register for testing clinics on our website under shop. 
And on nutritionconnectionbalance.com, we have tons of free things there. Please spend time there. Please pass on my website. And we have an Instagram that I do very small uh, little blurbs. I just I did three series of vitamin D. I did a three series on weight loss. So please check into that NCB help uh, on Instagram and pass it on. All right. We are so happy that you decided to test your glyphosate with us. We always want you to have the best health, love, joy, and vitality. We hope that you will take your detoxification seriously, review everything, and we look forward to continuing to take care of you and your family. Uh, wish you a really great year, and um, we appreciate you so much. Take care.